I got into the building industry because when I started to work with Alabama Power, I started in Winfield, and I was encouraged to, um, you know, to start going to the meetings. The builders that I worked with, they attended the meetings, so that was a good chance to meet and talk with them. I got involved with the Home Builders Association in Tuscaloosa when I had a chance at a promotion uh, if I came to Tuscaloosa. And um, the employees in Tuscaloosa, they were very involved in the Home Builders Association. So I started going to the meetings. I'd already been going to the ones in uh, Winfield, so it was just kind of a natural progression. First met Joe probably at a, I uh, can't remember the year, it's been so long ago, probably at a home builder, local home builder meeting. And, uh, uh, my first take of him was he just a calm and kind of steady guy, kind of sitting back in the back, watching, doesn't really say much, but uh, when he does talk, you know you want to listen to him. Mal Beavers was a plan designer at that time, and he encouraged me to, uh, to get involved, so I started as, a, as an area uh, VP, and that's what got me started with HBAA. You've heard the term uh, a silent leader before. And Joe sort of falls into that category with me. He uh, is probably 20 years ago, uh, first associates committee meeting. Uh, Joe was involved in it, uh, had a lot of input, but just sort of sitting on the side. And, uh, and so that, that is really my first impression of him. When Joe joined uh, about 30 years ago, I uh, kind of looked at him and uh, he was with Alabama Power and uh, Kathy Brown and I were good friends and uh, just kind of wondered how he was going to you know, fit in with all of that. So uh, we uh, got to talking. He was real quiet and uh, he's kind of laid back to start with. And uh, so I was just going to keep an eye on him and see if he might be somebody that we could use in the future. If you look at an individual that's been uh, with a, with a utility for 41 years. He retired in 2009, I believe it was. Uh, and the impact that that has on, on someone is, is pretty impressive. He started his own company and, and really participated on the, uh, on the national level as, as well as the state level in a, in a big way. We can't be home builders without associates. and. Uh... To me, if, uh, when you start talking about Joe Daffron, if, you, if, if HBAA had a dictionary, like their own dictionary, and they had the word associate, I would think they would have a picture of Joe Daffron. Joe is a hard worker. Uh, he, he'll jump in there, he'll do anything he can possibly do to help the association. He, uh, the associates are number one in his mind and he's led us well. He brings back to the state meetings, the, uh, the winter board, the summer board, and, and the conventions, reports of uh, what's going on nationally and keeps all of the, uh, the associates that are not participating nationally uh, informed. I think Joe's impact on the local and the state and even the National Association of Home Builders He's just, he's always been a participant in everything they do, whether it be a golf tournament, a clay shoot, anything they do to make money for scholarships or anything like that. You always look around and Joe's always there. Years ago, the power company would take all the builders on trips, uh, different places. So they took us to the Dominican Republic one year and uh, we'd went out and had a nice dinner and had several drinks. And one thing about Joe, I've never seen him drink over one drink. Well, this particular night, Joe may have had two. And there was a girl, her husband was a home builder, and I won't mention her name, Lady. And uh, she decided she wanted to show everybody her new bra. And she took her shirt off on the dance floor. And Joe, being the gentleman he was, some, somehow or another the shirt got thrown away or, or somebody else had it. And Joe took his shirt off on the dance floor. She put his shirt on. And we looked out there and Joe, they finally found her shirt and he just tied it around his neck. And I have, I have ridden that till the end. I mean, every time I see Joe, I, t I, I say something about it. And every time I see this lady, I start laughing because I think about Joe on that dance floor with that shirt tied around his neck. Anything that uh, Joe put his mind to, he did. Everything we asked him to do, he did. He just, uh, he never said no to anything. 
and he always wanted to do it one step better than the guy before him. And uh, he has. Uh, everything he's done on the state level and the national level uh, for the associates, he has stepped up and he's very, very deserving of this uh, award. He, uh, yeah, he's worked hard, worked real hard. I feel that uh, Joe deserves being in the Hall of Fame from all of his contributions that he's made both locally, uh, statewide, and nationally. I think Joe deserves the Hall of Fame because of, of what he's given back to this, to this association, not only through the local, the state, the national, Joe gives 110% on everything he does on this. You know, even after he's retired from his job, he's still participating, still giving back. It is, nobody deserves this more than Joe. Joe, congratulations. Yeah, it's well deserving. And I don't ever want you to think that you backed into this honor. I want you to know that you saw an opportunity in this association to move forward. I want you to know that you kicked the door open, you walked in, you took care of business, and there's no doubt you deserve being where we are, where you are today. And I want to personally welcome you into the uh, category of Hall of Fame members. Joe, congratulations on uh, becoming a new member to the, the uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, we welcome you and look forward to wearing a medal with you uh, uh, this evening. Joe, congratulations. Mun and I are just tickled to death to have you as a friend, you and Diane, and congratulations on this honor. It's well deserved. I would like to thank, in fact, I'd like to say a sincere thanks to the members of the association and also to my wife, Diane, for her support through all the years. I would like to thank Russell and the entire staff. No matter what kind of issue that you have, you can always make a phone call and get the help you need, and I sincerely appreciate that. Also, I need to, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Randy Fanning. I know probably there was a period of time um, when he was getting to know me that he was probably ready to run when he saw me coming because he thought, oh no, Joe's got another question for me. So thank you, Randy. Being inducted as a member of the Hall of Fame uh, is just humbling for me because I look at the other people that have already been inducted into that and just very appreciative of, uh, of that recognition. Well, it just so happened that the president that year was Donna Rawls. Uh, it's Donna Henry now, and she told me that there was an opening uh, in the association for an executive officer. And she knew that she was a friend of mine, and she knew that I really wasn't happy in the job that I had, so she encouraged me to, um, to apply for it. I did, went through the interview process, and Lo and behold, I got the job, and the rest is history. Just a go-getter, um, smart, um, just enjoyed her, uh, a people person, I guess. She was outgoing. You know, Lynn started a year after I did in the you know, mid-'80s, and the thing I remember most about Lynn is she brought a whole new level of professionalism to the executive officers group statewide. You know, back in those days, a lot of times you had more of a elect, you know, a secretary that kept the meeting minutes and got the monthly meetings going, and that was about it. But she brought her A game and really put Huntsville on the map. She struck me as being very upbeat, very positive. Uh, and after working with her when I got on the Associates Council, I found out she was very, very organized. Uh, we didn't have any staff when I started. I was the only staff person. And back then, we there was a computer there, but it had never been turned on. So we had to, we finally plugged it in and said, okay, we've got a computer, now what are we gonna do with it? So we got someone to come in and write a membership program. So those were just the challenges to get us started and get our feet on the ground. But between Donna and Kenneth Chandler and some other key members, we managed to pull it all together and off we went. A lot of learn as you go. Uh, she learned with us and we learned with her. And um, just, I think just being a tight knit group made it easier. It's when she started, we had 
probably a little over 200 members, and she grew that during her tenure with the home builders to uh, about 1,200 members. You know, and that's the lifeblood of our association. Lynn was very well organized. She also recognized talent. Uh, she was able to solicit participation from members, builders, and associates to get them involved in the association. She turn, helped turn that association into a political dynamo, very active in community politics and community services. I think she was a great listener, but she was also a leader. Um, she would not let us get off track. One of the things that I'm most proud of was the development of the Building Home and Remodeling Show. That was a huge member getter for us, and it was a revenue generator as well. And we had tabletop nights, and we thought, well, you know, why don't we do this for the public and see what happens? And I'll never forget, Mike Nevins and I were standing there that morning of, of the opening day. We only did one day, and we both looked at each other and said, do we think anybody's going to show up? And sure enough, they did. We had, we had some people come in. We charged a dollar a person. We made a little bit of money, so we were happy. They had a home show, and she sold a sponsorship for the back of a name badge. And I'm like, why do you do, why do, you do that? And she said, well, because 50% of the time, that badge is turned around so a vendor or associate member can get really good advertising on half the people that are walking around here, and that's worth something. And she sold it out every time. Lynn's very deserving of this honor. Uh, She's been awarded with the uh, highest honor she could get as an EO from the National Association. Uh, locally, she's been inducted to our Hall of Fame years ago. You know, after 30, 32 years with the association, she left us with a great foundation to build on. And we're still going strong. Over her 30 years plus years at the association, just her leadership she provided, and not only to our association, I think she helped mentor other associations. I think she was giving her, her time at state and national meetings um, to help other associations learn from other EOs, but also mentor them. Very proud of her, uh, and she's certainly deserving of this award. Uh, I think there's only three other local association executives that have been placed in the Hall of Fame, and she is most deserving of this special honor. Ms. Lynn Kilgore, uh, this is a great honor, and I can't think of anybody that deserves it more. Uh, you've been a great leader for us, a great spokesman for the Builders Association in North Alabama and all over the state. Uh, but this is a, a great honor, and uh, I'm very proud to have known you and worked with you. Lynn, congratulations. Can't wait to have a toast in Nashville. And uh, this congratulations, well deserved. Lynn, I'm uh, very proud of you and the accomplishments in your career through the Home Builders. And congratulations on this award. It's most deserving. And I uh, look forward to hugging you tonight. Well, I think I would really like to think, uh, to thank Eleanor Woolsey was who was the EO in Mobile when I started, was a great mentor to me. Jerry Wood, God bless his soul, I called him up all the time asking him legal questions and he was always right there for me. And Russell and Debbie certainly were, were always there, you know, I always, every time Russell said there was gonna be something that was gonna generate income, my first question was, well, how much is the local going to get? And, and all my fellow EOs, you know, we all shared things and, and they were all very important to me and, and I cherished every one of them. Certainly my son Jake, who was born basically into the association, certainly he had to put up with a lot of times that I was not at home because I was at meetings or traveling. And, and, and of course my late husband Mike, um, he put up a lot with me and, and what I had to deal with every day. And, and then I just want to thank the members of the nominating committee. 
uh, both on the local level and on the state level that considered me for this award and and then just the members in general that I came in contact with during my career on the local level and on the state level all mean the world to me and their friendships that I will always cherish. When I look at the people, the men and women that have been inducted before me, I'm really, really honored to be in the company of such a prestigious group of, of men and women. Uh, it's very humbling. Um, the association was part of my family for 32 years. So it's, it's very humbling to be recognized in this way. And, and I hope that I made just a small, small difference to the industry. What started in high school, a local builder, uh, Carl D. Collier, called and offered me a job on a construction site. Well, in 1979, Kenneth Warren came by to see me and told me that he was setting up Marshall County Home Builders Association. Well, it just naturally went from Marshall County to HBAA and um, going to the meetings and getting involved on the, on the state level. Uh, I met Dan uh, back in 1959. We were in the same kindergarten class, uh, the Kitty College graduating class of 1960. You know, he doesn't BS about anything, and when he talks, he knows what he's talking about. And uh, uh, I've come to understand that you can trust him, and whatever he says is what it is. Dan was tall and quiet, and he was tall. Nice guy, unassuming non-controversial, I can give you all kinds of attributes, but my first impression was tall. Dan and I served together in Home Builders, Marshall County and State and all that for a couple of decades or more now. And when Dan gets a project going or gets a leadership position, he is absolutely tenacious in getting it done. Things get done when Dan is in charge. I remember the first time I met Dan Taylor was at one of our summer board meetings. And, you know, I see him kind of cutting a trail across there, kind of a tall, slim, kind of lanky fella. And I thought, well, I wonder who this guy is. He came up and I can tell you, we hit it off right off the bat. Such a wonderful person, kind, you know, caring, just a, a genuinely nice guy. I've, I've known Dan most of my career. He was active with the Marshall County Home Builders uh, Really, since it started in 1979, he was one of the founding members there and has maintained his membership and been very active on the local, state, and national level forever. And, you know, with the, uh, he's just done a wonderful job, and he's a quiet but effective leader. Dan's a smart guy, and he understands the industry. He's got a big background in construction. He's been doing it since he was a kid. Uh, he's a certified you know, master appraiser, uh, and he's given us great insight into that side of the house. I'd say Dan's been an effective leader in the association because of his tenacity and his dedication to the association. You know, he comes to things with a different perspective, both as a builder and as an appraiser. That gave him, I think, a, a unique perspective on how the association can move towards fixing some of the problems that we were facing at that time, especially as it related to appraisals. You know, he was instrumental in getting um, the appraisers board to basically mandate and codify uh, that you had to use the cost approach when doing an appraisal on a new home. That was huge. Coupled with a CE program that we put together at Dan's uh, direction, and we did statewide with over 300 appraisers to teach them how to appraise a new home. And it had immediate impact. Uh, we had the mayor of Decatur after our class up there where he saw increases in the Decatur new home market of over 5% within six months after he did the class or we did the class up there. And it's been meaningful. Uh, Dan has been extremely influential in, in Marshall County 
and of course later on the state, but, um, and he still is, and he will be until he's not kicking anymore. All through high school, Dan drove a 1952 Chevy, but it was so uncool that it was cool. Big old green thing. In 72, uh, uh, we were both freshmen at Auburn. I got up to go to class one morning and I was walking down the stairs and I saw Dan's car in the parking lot back there. That, that big green thing stuck out, you know, I got a sore thumb. Uh, and he was out there packing it up. We you know, walked over there and like, you know, what, what you doing? And Dan, I remember exactly what he said. He said, I know what I want to do with my life and I don't need a college education to do it. So I commenced to try to, to convince Dan that this is a bad decision on his part and he needs to hang in there and stay with it. Fast forward seven years, I'm now out of law school. I've passed the bar. Uh, my first job, I'm making $13,500 a year and Dan's already made a fortune building houses. So I look back at that conversation in that parking lot and I think, you know, really, who was the idiot? <laughs> so sometimes we ask a lot of our presidents. We got the idea, we were doing convention in Nashville, that he needed to look the part of a Nashvillian, that music legend that we thought that he would probably be able to portray. So uh, we did our best to go out and buy about $5 worth of cheap beads and some hot glue, and we made him a Porter Wagner suit that he strutted all over Nashville with. Uh, it was hilarious and he was such a good sport, and I think everyone enjoyed that. You know, Dan's level of participation uh, is equal to anybody that we've ever had served the association. He, he's kept a finger in the association pie, if you will, for forever, and uh, he's still as active today as he was 30 years ago, and it's just a tribute to, to him and uh, his willingness to serve this industry is, makes, it, makes him special. I don't think anybody's more deserving of a Hall of Fame. My goodness, back before Dan was even on the ladder at State, he was dragging me to another county uh, to try to help that association get going. And so uh, totally giving and unrelenting, there's, nobody deserves this award more than Dan. Dan is certainly one of the most deserving folks to enter the Hall of Fame. When you really step back, and I know we talk a lot about appraisals, and, and over time he's talked a lot about the appraisals, but that truly made an impact on Alabama's home building industry that continues to this day. That's in addition to the fact that he is such a, a genuine and kind and dedicated leader. He'll do whatever you ask him to do, uh, and he always has. And I think that's, that's why he really, truly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Dan, I'm so proud to have the opportunity to work for and with you over the years, and I can't think of any Anybody more deserving uh, for this award tonight than you, and congratulations. Dan, I am proud for you. You deserve this award as much as anybody ever has, and congratulations. Dan, congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Again, I, I am so proud of you. You're so deserving of this, and I'm proud to uh, not only uh, congratulate you, but to call you friend. Well, I absolutely want to congratulate Dan for uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, that's, uh, that'll look good on a resume when he needs a job. I'd like to thank my family. Um, they're here tonight. Uh, my wife, Jean, daughter, Mary Beth, her husband, Nicholas Wood, uh, three grandchildren, Charlotte, Fritz, and Goldie, and um, my sister-in-law and her husband, uh, Frank, and Frankie and Rick Nichols. Well, being inducted into the Hall of Fame is, is probably the biggest honor I've ever had. Um, it's something I never expected and um, something I always remember.